Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day, and if not, I really hope that it gets turned around for you. So we're going to be doing another Retro Tuesday throwback, and we're going to do these 1989 Tops uh, cards, these uh, bubblegum cards. Um, each of these packs are going to have uh, bubblegum in them um, that we will not be chewing. Um, but uh, we're going to be... Uh, Chasing uh, the rookies. Um, there's not a lot of value in these uh, in this pack. They were so mass overproduced. Um, but I'm going to do my biggest uh, break. We're going to do a whole case of these 1989 tops. Um, it'll be just for some fun. We'll be chasing those rookies, uh, Randy Johnson and Gary Sheffield, um, and a couple more that are scattered in there. And we'll be definitely doing the uh, Hall of Famers. Uh, we'll be looking for those guys since this set is. 30 years old now. Um, crazy to think that it's 30 years old. Um, but we're going to go ahead and break into this. Um, these are good old wax packs. I bought this from the baseball card uh, exchange. Um, they had wrapped ones that were um, guaranteed to be not have gone through. Um, but I didn't want to pay an extra 10, 12 bucks for that. Um, I spent like $8 on this, um, because I'm just looking for fun. And, uh, this will just be, uh, a really cool break. So came, the package was kind of damaged. I get that. I understand that. Um, this isn't the top of the line product for them. Um, but there's the cool case, um, 1989 tops, these wax packs that everybody talks about. Um, let's see, we had uh, Spring Fever Baseball, uh, no purchase necessary. Looks like you could, what could you win? Uh, well, there's the bubble gum. Um, I don't really know. Oh, a spring trip, spring training trip worth $5,000 at the time. That was cool. I wonder if anybody ever won that, um, if anybody ever got to uh, take place in that back in 1989 or probably uh the year 1990 back when uh uh yeah 1990 spring training trip uh so these are cool so we'll go ahead and get through them let me slide those over there and kind of out of the way like i said this is my biggest uh opening um as of to date um of these retro tuesday i've been doing some rack packs and uh a few packs here and there but uh this was uh Pretty good uh, little price for this, and uh, I just thought it'd be fun. I wanted to open up more than uh, a couple of packs for you. Um, so we will go through these and uh, see if we get anything, if we hit those uh, cards that we're looking for. Um, like this style, like this uh, design. Um, it's pretty simple. White borders, which I really like because it really hides um, uh, the black ones and the ones with the color really show if there's some damage on there. And uh, these seem to hold their corners a lot better. Um, just a nice uh, printed um, name of uh, the team and then just a little swoosh and what they are. I think the one thing kind of missing from this is like a position. I'd really like to see a position and maybe a logo on there, but I really do like the position. Obviously, you can find it right here. Uh, this guy is a pitcher. Um but uh, that's a nice, pretty nice design. Pretty uh, common with tops. I think a lot of you have seen these already. Um, but uh, really, really enjoy uh, tops cards. And um, these 1989 ones kind of bring back some memories. There's a Roger Clemens um, and uh, Willie Randolph. Um, but yeah, it's just just fun to kind of get back into these. Uh, it was so funny back when I was a kid and I was opening these uh, 1989 uh, series tops packs. Like I would, I, I probably wanted the gum more, um, but um, really didn't know what I had. Um, really was just kind of collecting baseball cards because I like to collect them baseball cards. There's a Cardinal. Um, there's another Cardinal. Um, but uh, yeah, these are just cool. I, like I said, these bring back such memories. Um, of collecting cards we would go to a card shop um there was a card shop uh, a couple card shops down the street from us and um me and my brothers i there's fred mcgriff oh didn't mean to drop that uh but there's fred mcgriff i really like fred mcgriff um he is uh um, i think a very underrated player um but we would uh me and my brother I remember this one time that we uh jumped on our bikes and we were kids and um, I'm guessing my mom, if she's listening, I don't think she watches these videos, but she might every once in a while. But uh, I remember when we were a kid, me and my brother jumped on our bikes and we rode up to uh, this baseball card shop and we had to go across this big old um, busy street. And uh, we thought we, we thought we were real daredevils. Um, but uh, yeah, we saved up our money and uh, we were really big into baseball cards for a while. And it was just a lot of fun to collect. Um, 
Now, we did think that we were going to be millionaires. Uh, there's a Sandy Alomar um, Future Stars card. Uh, he's a good player there. Um, like I said, we thought we were going to be number one draft pick, Ty Griffith. Um, I will start this story for the third time. Let's see if another player pops up. Um, we thought we were going to be millionaires, man. We thought that uh, you collect these baseball cards. There's a Will Clark. That's awesome. I already got that one. But it's always good to pull a Will Clark one out of there. And there, there's a Nolan Ryan, which, of course, has the bubblegum on it that ruined it. So, uh, great. Um, but there's a Nolan Ryan card. Um, so... Yeah, we thought we were going to um, save up these cards and we were going to sell them one day and, uh, you know, we were going to retire on these things. And I think a lot of us probably that are watching these um, thought uh, we were. Um, the cool part is that now it's like we kind of know, like, I mean, there's some money in these um, cards every once in a while. I mean, I actually really like seeing that uh, cards seem to be, there's a Hall of Famer, Dave Winfield, uh, cards seem to be... Um, Increasing a little bit in value, obviously the new cards um, that are built with all the relics and the signatures and stuff, and then they're actually numbering them, which obviously this is why this set isn't worth much. They overproduce these, they mass produce these so much that uh, it is just hard to, there's Paul Molitor, once, Paul Molitor, sorry, once again, the last card ruined by gum. So that, uh, that stinks. Um, but we really thought that, uh, you know, it's really cool to see cards getting some value. And even these older cards, you know, now I feel like there's an upswing in the hobby, which is really cool that people are um, starting to really get back into it. Um, I didn't get a chance. There's a Greg Jeffries, a future star. Um, I remember when he came to the Cardinals, uh, we thought, you know, oh man, he's first baseman. He's going to come and he's going to be really, really good for us. And he was pretty much a bust when he came to the Cardinals. Um, it was just fun to uh, have him. That We thought we were a big deal that the Cardinals got him. But um, like I was saying, like I've seen um, some um, videos of the National and, I mean, some of those older cards and um, some of these cases are um, well out of my range, obviously. So it's really cool to see that there is definitely um, a huge interest in cards now i mean even people are buying a lot of these wax packs um, um i'm like i just bought a whole box of these just to look through them again just to kind of get back into the nostalgia and um so it's just a lot of fun and um i'm having a great time there's a wade boggs uh that's cool um what a great player wade boggs was i know a lot of people really like him and uh, collect him and um i liked wade boggs when i was growing up there's a turn back the clock of uh, hank aaron um but it's really good to see. I mean, there's a John Smoltz. That's nice. Um, that's his... I don't know if that's considered his rookie card or not. Um, let me check. Uh, give me one second. Let me lay that down there. Okay, so that is not considered his rookie. I just wanted to look that up. I think that he is the year before. Um, but... Uh, just want to check that for you. There's Ozzy again. We remember him more as a manager. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about, but it's just really nice to see a lot of people getting back into cards. Um, I know there's people out there. There's Ryan Sandberg, um, Oral Hershiser, and uh, just um, really cool, uh, really fun to see that. Um, obviously, I think like if you're watching this, there's a great community going on out there. People uh, trading cards. People are buying cards and. Um, and uh, it's just it's just a lot of fun. It is just a lot of fun to kind of get back into this. Um, really sad that I kind of missed out on so many years. Um, I could have probably had uh, another good ten to fifteen years under my belt of um, that card is damaged big time. Um, there's Robin Yount, I like Robin Yount. Um, there's a lot of cards that. Uh, I could have had and just been collecting and wouldn't have to get back into kind of collecting them all again if I had just stuck with it. But um, I think like most of us, we, you know, the baseball companies ruined these. Um, they over mass produced them. They became, they got greedy. Um, they got uh, to the point where they just wanted to sell packs and um, there's Jose Canseco. Um, and it just kind of ruined it. it. There's Don Mattingly. There's, um, 
obviously a lot of people really like Don Mangley. I do too. Um, just a really good first baseman, um, really good hitter. Um, obviously he's manager now. Um, so it's good to see him back in baseball. Um, but Topps was just out for the money and, um, it's kind of a bummer. And it's really nice to see that, you know, obviously they're still, I mean, they're still business. I, I get it. They're still going to want to sell, um, their cards for money and, uh, do a lot of them. And, you know, if you buy any of the top series one or series two or anything like that, they still make a lot of cards, but it's really nice to see that they are trying to put a little bit of value back into them, uh, by doing those short numbered cards, the short prints and stuff like that. Um, I think that will only help them in the long run and it will get, uh, I would hate for it to see, um, now that I'm back into it for it to get a big boom and, uh, and then kind of like sizzle back out again and, um, everybody kind of move on. But, um, I may be wrong and this might be going on for a while. Um, but there is just seems to be like a buzz and maybe it's just cause I'm in it, but there seems to be a buzz around baseball cards again. Um, and, uh, it's just really cool to see. I know that eBay and, uh, other places to sell cards, which I haven't really found a new other place other than eBay. I sell my stuff on eBay, um, cards that I don't keep or cards that I don't trade. Um, I sell some cards on eBay, you know, the ones that people might want. And, uh, um, it's just good to see that there is definitely, I think that it's really helped out the hobby. That's, um, a, just a, um, a good way to, you know, you don't have to go to your card shop. There's Jack Morris, um, Hall of Famer there. Um, you don't have to go to your card shop and try to search for stuff or a guy across the country doesn't have, um, you know, if it doesn't have your card and you just don't know a way to get it. Um, but I have to really like the fact that man for, for pretty cheap, you can, uh, jump on there and maybe find your favorite player or a card of his. And, uh, maybe you're looking for a 1989 tops and you are, let's see the first player on his. Maybe you're a Dick Schofield fan. Or maybe you're an Angels fan, and uh, I throw this card up on eBay, and and you're like, well, you know what? I would love to have a Dick Schofield card for cheap, and I really think that is the way that um, there's Giants leaders card. I think that's the way that I think this uh, hobby will uh, go. It's just an it's just a nice way you can search all over the country uh, for anyone that might have that card, and uh, it's maybe not in somebody's basement where they haven't touched them in a long time. There's Doc Gooden. Um, but yeah, that's it. I mean, um, let's just see what else we got in here. Um, we got quite a few packs to go. Um, I hope you had fun at uh, National uh, Baseball Card. I don't know if it's National Baseball Card Day or National Card Day. Um, but uh, it was just a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun um, to go and get those free packs. And uh, just kind of look through those. And then there's Mike Maddox. He is the uh, pitching coach, brother of Greg Maddox, pitching coach of, um, uh, brother of, uh, pitching coach of the Cardinals right now. So just um, National Card Day was a lot of fun. So here's the next pack here. We got, uh, there's a number one draft pack of Andy Bennis. Uh, went on to be a pretty good Cardinals pitcher. Um, so that's really cool. I guess that's like in a college or a high school uniform there. Um, collegiate player of the year. So that's cool. I like, um, like Danny Bennis. Um, there's an all-star card. There's another Will Clark card. So I'm going to be collecting up a couple of these. So I'll probably, uh, maybe send a couple of those on the way, but, uh, we definitely <laughs> always, oh, and there's a Nolan Ryan. That's cool. So, the Will Clark seems to come before the Nolan Ryan. It came in that same sequence in the pack before, but at least this one isn't ruined by the gum. So very cool that we got a Nolan Ryan card that was actually uh, in good condition. And um, this is, there's another Ryan Samper, but that one is ruined by the gum. I can kind of feel it on the back. It's not too bad there. So here's the next pack here. Uh, we got, looks like we got a few more packs to go. Actually, we got maybe half the box to go. There's that gum, that good old gum. Um, I would not uh, suggest eating that now. Uh, Thirty-year-old gum probably doesn't hold up very well. Um, I think it. I have heard that it's gotten some people sick. Another Dave Winfield. Um, but yeah, uh, I remember as a kid, like man, that gum was 
was good. I really like just regular bubble gum flavor. Um, and so, oh, there's Harold Baines. He's another Hall of Famer. Just got elected in 2019. Um, but that gum was uh, always uh, one of my favorite parts of opening up the packs. And which is why probably the Topps Company did it. You know, they thought it was a cool thing to do to have uh, to gu have gum in there that people would want to chew on. Um, I think I've like I've said in an earlier video that um, there's a nice Jose Akendo. He's I like him as the uh, Cardinal. Um, nice second baseman and shortstop, and I think he played a little bit of third base maybe too. Um, Bob Forsh. Um, there's a Bo Jackson card. Always uh, doesn't hurt to get a Bo Jackson card. Uh, great uh, two way athlete. Um, also, obviously, a really great athlete, and um, in both football with the Raiders and uh, baseball with the um, the Royals. Um, yeah, I lose my train of thought when I see a card. So um, we'll just keep going through these. And look, there's Jack Clark. Jack Clark played for the Cardinals for a little while. Um, it's kind of a bummer that Jack Clark. Played for the Cardinals. He came over and he was number 22. Look at that. Roger Clemens ruined by the gum. And uh, that Jack Clark uh, came over and played for the Cardinals um, uh, because uh, he was number 22 as well. And um, now if you wear anything, it, you know, if I ever wanted a Will Clark uh, number 22 uh, jersey or something like that, um, people would just confuse it that I was a Jack Clark fan. And, um, you know, who wants that? <laughs> I'm more of a Will Clark fan. I, I always, I would love a Will Clark uh, um, uh, Cardinals jersey, but it, nobody could tell that it was Jack Clark or Will Clark. Um, so just stopped on Dante Bichette. Um, he became a pretty good player for the Colorado Rockies. But I think what he's worth uh, noting is that his son, Bo Bichette, is up uh, with the Toronto uh, Blue Jays and um, uh, is like hit a doubles rookie record for somebody in their first like 11 games. I think he had nine doubles or something like that. So looks like his son is off to a really good start uh, to his career. And there's Joe Carter. I always remember him for that uh, home run that he hit at the end of the World Series. And obviously more of a, uh, you know, I remember more on Toronto. Um, but uh, always like Joe Carter. Uh, really good player there. Um yeah, I haven't looked at the standings lately. Um, I know I watched the Cardinals. They came back. They're beating up on the Pirates right now. It's kind of disappointing in just a way. Not that, not that but I was just going to say disappointing that the uh, Pirates um, were playing well. Um, I always like when newer teams get in there and play pretty good. Oops. Uh, that was a Steve something card that I was trying to wipe the uh, gum off of. Um, there's Andres Galarraga. I really like him. Record breaker, 1988. What's that? interesting um but what i was saying was um i was like when new teams are kind of getting a chance but they have really fallen off and so the cardinals are playing them and they need wins so obviously i need them to win and uh they came back and beat the pirates here just a little while ago but it was uh um cardinals are hanging in there and uh in the central but you know i just don't know if they're going to make it um, I don't know if your team is uh, playing well or or not. If you're, a, like I said, if you're a Yankees fan or um, uh, a De Los Angeles Dodgers fan, um, I think you're pretty much just kind of waiting. There's Barry Bonds. Um, always never hurts to have a Barry Bonds card. Um, Tom Pagnazzi. I like Tom Pagnazzi. Look at him with the old double flap. I don't remember that, but that's interesting. Um, he was a big time. Uh, big time. Uh, he was a catcher here uh, for the Cardinals, and um, he was kind of one of those love him, hate him uh, players. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, just a lot of teams looking, getting ready for uh, the playoffs here, kind of in the home stretch. I think what there's like 30, 40 something games left. Um, we obviously have the month of August and then into September. And so maybe there's a little bit more than that. But uh, um, just really looking forward to hopefully maybe um, my Cardinals can get into the uh, playoffs and and uh, maybe make some noise. There's Andre Dawson. I always like Andre Dawson. Um, but, uh, yeah, hope your team makes it. And if not, I hope that um, they're getting uh, close to uh, uh, maybe getting it turned around. They, you know, obviously they uh, – 
get some nice draft picks there and and uh we'll uh start taking off in the future i mean i like kind of like what the padres are doing a little bit where they got some draft picks and um, I think it's one of the most frustrating thing about the Cardinals. They seem to be like kind of a middle team. They never seem to, uh, you know, win lately. They haven't even made the playoffs the last two, three years, I think. But then they're not towards the top. Look at that. Huh. That's kind of cool. I look like they got this almost the same delivery a little bit. Um, but, uh, but then they don't get the top picks. And so then that's what's frustrating is that when they do build talent, they seem to let them just sit in the minor leagues forever. And we've got guys like Dexter Fowler and Chris Carpenter and um, that are not really hitting and not helping the team. And we're trying to make a playoff spot. And we got some young guys sitting down there that could probably help us. They didn't do anything at the trade deadline. So it'd be really cool to see. Um, oh, man, look at that card. So this is what's interesting. I don't understand how that happens in the middle of a pack. Um, yeah, so we're just going <laughs> to... Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Um, but like I said, there's Chandler Rusa, uh, manager of the A's and then also uh, the Cardinals for a really long time. Uh, he was uh, manager of the A's back there um, in the World Series against the Giants and the A's where they had the uh, terrible earthquake in the middle of the World Series games. And uh, I remember that. There's a Robin Ventura, uh, number one draft pick. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, obviously, I don't think this is considered as rookie card, but it's they just do draft pick cards. Um, we've seen a couple of them before, but there's Robin Ventura. He went on to a pretty good career with the Chicago White Sox and then um, did a little bit of managing after that um, but uh, yeah it's these cards are there's Tom Glavin it's Tom Glavin card uh, I don't know not a second year card um, so it's yeah it's 88 um, I had pulled a Tom Glavin rookie card uh, out of I think yeah I pulled one out of the 88 that I shared with you guys uh, out of those um, did I do like um, some uh, rack packs or something? And I got a Tom Glavin. Um, but I really like those Braves pitchers. Greg Max, Tom Glavin, John Smoltz. Man, they had uh, amazing pitching rotation there for a while. And it was really fun to watch them. Um, I've said in before videos that I was uh, I was born in Georgia and uh, then lived in South Carolina a while. And that's kind of how I became a Giants and a Will Clark fan. But I do kind of always keep my eye on the Braves. And I'm sorry about that. My uh, camera ran out of space, and I need to go up and clean it up a little bit more than that. Um, but here's uh, Don Mattingly, uh, all-star. Um, we just got about maybe like 12 packs to go, and uh, um, we'll talk about some players that jump out at us. Um, and there's John Crook. Look at that little baby face, John Crook. Um, I always remember him against Randy Johnson in that all-star game. Uh, there's a nice Barry Larkin right there. Um, and John Watham, if you ever watch, uh, uh, Jab's family, you know all about D John Watham, um, seems to haunt, uh, Eric over there at, um, Jab's family videos, and now people troll him all the time by sending him all these John Watham cards. Um, but yeah, my, uh, uh, once again, forgot exactly what I was talking about, but, um, need to clean up my camera, um, need to, uh, get some more space on there and, um, move some of that stuff off. Um, but we got about 12 uh, packs left, so we're just going to kind of uh, fly through them here and uh, see if we get anybody else to talk about. Um, we have not hit the Randy Johnson yet um, or the Gary Sheffield. Uh, makes me wonder, you know, like sometimes when I get packs like this and boxes like this um, and there's a card that is so bent in the middle uh, between a whole bunch of other cards, it just makes it impossible for me to think that that happens. So you never know. Maybe this was uh, something that somebody went through and resealed up all the packs. But maybe I'll prove myself wrong and we'll hit one of those uh, guys. But uh, we have not seen any of those. There's Kirk Gibson. Um, and uh, maybe they're just uh, just haven't hit one yet. But um, just always makes me wonder. And uh, But we haven't hit uh, either one of those rookies yet. Um, the ones we were searching for. And I don't know if we're going to get one. 
Um, so let's see who else we got here. There's Ken Caminetti, uh, rest in peace, buddy. He uh, has uh, passed away and um, number, another number one pick. Uh, obviously passed away, I think, due to a lot of the, you know, he got caught up in that steroid stuff, and I think that maybe he, uh, there's another guy that's passed away uh, before his, uh, before he got older and uh, in Kirby Puckett. Uh, see, like I said, so here's a card that's completely bent in the middle. I don't know how that happens in the middle of a pack unless you are, these have like been gone through or something like that. There's a Raphael Palmero, another guy that got caught up in the old uh, steroid stuff. Um, unfortunately, you know, it was an exciting time for baseball. Um, I remember the Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds and um, I remember when Mark McGuire was trying to hit uh, 70. There's a nice Steve Avery. He was a good pitcher for the Braves uh, for a little while. Um, you know, there's Jim Abbott, Jim Abbott too. Uh, so some really cool number one draft picks in this uh, series uh, that went on to have uh, pretty good careers in the major leagues. Um, but I remember it was really exciting. And man, who doesn't like to see home runs flying out of the park? Uh, speaking of Mark McGuire, there's a Mark McGuire card right there. Um, from his days in the Oakland A's. But, uh, oh, nice Tony Gwynn as well. Uh, always like Tony Gwynn. Uh, this card, nope, it, look, it looks fine. Just had to look around my camera there. Um, oh, I saw an Expo and I saw Martinez and I thought uh, it was, uh, it was uh, I, saw, I saw an Expo card and I thought it was uh, Randy Johnson. No, no, Martinez doesn't have anything to do with it. But uh, let me try to finish at least one story here. Um, I don't mind getting stopped by cards, but um, you know, it was awesome. It was, you know, Mark McGuire was smashing home runs and Sammy Sosa would come to town and they would go back and forth and they were hugging and and uh, Mark McGuire actually did it. Uh, hit his 70th home run um, uh, against the Cubs. Um, and uh, it was awesome. It was exciting and then it just was really a downer when it all came out that it was pretty much all oh you know what so here's what i'm gonna say this pack doesn't have gum in it and maybe tops forgot it um i'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that my guess is that these cards were gone through and then they were resealed and put back in the pack um, I think it's, you know, I can't say that for sure, um, but it's really weird to see it without the gum. And maybe not all these packs went through, were gone through, but uh, it's kind of a bummer. Um, yeah, like that one's not even sealed. Um, so, yeah, that's, I guess, what you, that's why you spend the extra money to get the thing, but I was just doing this for fun. Um, but it seems like such a bummer that uh, people do that. I think it really ruins... Raphael Pereira really ruins the um, the hobby. Uh, the fact that uh, people might go through and try to find uh, one or two cards and then they uh, kind of uh, put the packs back together and then they sell it as, you know, yeah. So I think the bottom of this box, um, there's gum in that one, but um, just a lot of signs with the bent cards and the gum that this is... Uh, these packs, these packs were possibly gone through, but I'm um, still getting some Hall of Famers and, uh, you know, getting some really good players. Um, just a bummer that I don't think we're going to have a chance to find a Randy Johnson or a Gary Sheffield in here. It's um, becoming kind of clear that uh, we are not going to find that. So that's a true bummer. Um, this one seemed a little bit more sealed. Um Kind of a dead giveaway when the uh, gum is missing. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me. Maybe uh, Tops just every once in a while forgot the gum. Uh, but not going to spoil my fun. You know, I'm still having a good time enjoying opening these cards and another Nolan Ryan. And, uh, you know, they're just, you know, even if they're really truly just having some fun opening up these cards. Um, just having a reminiscing with you guys about uh, what it was in... Uh, opening up cards back when you were a kid. So uh, we got this pack and one more pack to go. Um, it's been a lot of fun opening up a whole case of this. Um, and uh, let's see what we got here in these last couple of packs. Um, oh, what? Okay. So <laughs> so here it is. A uh, rookie card of Gary Sheffield. Um, I might have spoken too soon. I'm going to take it all back. 
Um, maybe a couple of these packs were gone through. Maybe none of the packs were gone through. Maybe they went through and missed this one. Uh, maybe they were just trying to pull out the Randy Johnson or something like that. But um, you know what? Uh, I don't know now. Um, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen as soon as I started talking about that. It just seemed like all signs were pointing that they had gone through, you know, with the bent packs, with the, uh, um, with the gum missing and stuff like that. But cool to see that we got at least one of them. And uh, we got one last pack. Let's see. Could we hit a Randy Johnson in this last pack? That'd be kind of cool. Hold up the suspense until the very end. All right, let's see. We got half a pack to go here, and we are not going to get it. So no Randy Johnson, but like I said, a lot of cool Hall of Famers, a lot of fun just doing that, a lot of fun looking through there. Um, sorry if you got tired of my uh, um, speculation that maybe these were had gone through. Um, maybe you could agree with me or disagree with me down in the comments, but lots of good players. Um you know, some uh, players that I used to watch when I was growing up and obviously some uh, guys that are, you know, Hall of Famers and, um, you know, just players that I really, really like and Will Clark. And so uh, fun pack to open. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, we hope to see you next time. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.